Greetings, urban farmers, gardeners, and healthy food visionaries. Farmer Greg here, and welcome to the 420th episode of the Urban Farm Podcast, where every day we work together to educate and inspire you to become part of your food revolution. Do you want to save money at the grocery store? Eat more organic whole foods, cultivate food security, and feel more connected to the earth? If so, then growing your own food is a no-brainer. You wouldn't believe how many people come to me claiming they can't grow their own food. They think they don't have enough space, that they're too busy, or that they simply don't have what it takes. Perhaps you've fallen for one of these gardening myths. If you think you can't grow your own food, or if you think the only food you have access to is what you buy in the grocery store, I have a life-changing webinar that you need to see. It's free and will help you unearth your inner gardener. I've helped thousands of people just like you grow their own food. And I'm speaking from my own experience when I say that with the right knowledge in place, there is no such thing as a brown thumb. With this free webinar, you can begin making your own garden dreams come true and start growing delicious, nutritious food for your family. Just text GARDEN to 44222 or go to IWANTTOGARDEN.COM and you'll receive our free webinar about the seven key factors you need to know to grow your own food. Remember, that's GARDEN to 44222 or IWANTTOGARDEN.COM. Today on our podcast, we have a returning guest who is committed to changing the way we eat one month at a time. We're talking with Ocean Robbins about the 31-Day Food Revolution. Ocean is the CEO, co-founder, and co-host of the Food Revolution Network and the co-host of the annual Food Revolution Summit. He has facilitated more than 50 week-long gatherings and 100 day-long workshops for leaders worldwide on a variety of health-related topics. Plus, he is already prepping for the next Food Revolution Summit taking place in April 2019. Ocean is the co-author of Choices for Our Future and Voices of the Food Revolution, and the author of The Power of Partnership. His next book, coming out this month, is titled 31 Day Food Revolution, Heal Your Body, Feel Great, and Transform Your World. Ocean, you've been on the show multiple times, and it's always great to have you. Welcome. Well, thank you, Greg. I feel welcome, and it's always great to be with you. Like you, I share a passion for food and for healthy food and for food as a liberatory opportunity to reclaim our lives and to stand for the kind of world we want. And I love that in all the places in the world where we don't feel like we can really make a difference. We, can, we often feel overwhelmed and stressed out by things beyond our control. Mm-hmm. What we find with food is that this is one place where you and I get to choose. We get to choose what we eat, and we get to choose how we eat it. And those choices have enormous impacts. And I love helping people, everyday folks, to realize the power of that impact. So what kind, we'll just jump in. You have a new book coming out. 31 Day Food Revolution, Heal Your Body, Feel Great, and Transform Your World. Tell me about the book. I'm really excited about it. Okay. Well, this book is kind of a stake in the ground for the food revolution. Like you, I'm sick and tired of seeing our kids get sick. And, you know, a third of our kids are expected to get diabetes in their lifetime. Two thirds of our population is overweight or obese. I'm sick of our elders not remembering the names of their loved ones because they have dementia. I'm, I'm sick of all of us living in fear of things like heart disease and cancer when I know that we have the capacity with our food choices to turn all of these diseases around. Yes. So this book is a stand to, to share what the medical literature tells us and make it accessible to everyday folks so that you can apply it in your life. You know, at the end of the day, cancer, heart disease, dementia, they don't care a heck of a lot how many books you read or how many podcasts you listen to or, uh-huh. or how much you know, but they do care what you eat and they care how you live. So my book is all about action. It's about 31 simple steps, short chapters that help you put the food revolution into action in your life. 
And we walk through four parts, which are really kind of like stages of the journey. Mm-hmm. Part one is detoxify. You look at how you can get rid of the things that might be making you sick in your diet and your kitchen and your life so you can clean up your act, so to speak. And then part two is nourish. It's where we look at how you can saturate your body, your cells with, with the micronutrients, the, the powerful antioxidants that will help you to thrive. So you have the brain that thinks clearly. So you have a, a heart that beats well. So you have a body that's fed in every way with the nutrients you need to love your life. And then part three is gather. That's where we look at how you build your tribe, your community, your web of relationships. Because let's face it, food is social. We're not just lone wolves. What we eat connects us to people and communities and families. And it can be a source of division, but it can also be a source of connection. And I'll show you how. And then and then part four is transform. And that's where we look at how you can leverage the power of food to be a part of changing the world for the better. And the spoiler alert here is that it's a heck of a lot easier to change the world than most of us ever imagined. So we look at how you can use your food choices, your simple everyday choices to help stop climate change, to help create a world where future generations have topsoil and water to grow food, to help create a system in which it's easier and easier for everybody to do the right thing because we're building social change and momentum towards a real food revolution. This is so exciting to me because I feel like I've been learning about and exploring food my entire life. And I know what's at stake here. I know the price we're paying for the status quo. And I know how powerful we can make a change with our food choices. And and I want to stand for that. And this book is my expression of that at this time in this in history. Wow. Oh, my gosh. We, there's a thousand different places I could go with this. And I want to start with what's at stake. The U.S. government recently put out a report that says we've got some problems and they're coming up fast. It's in their environmental report that came out in November. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that your book kind of addresses some of these things. Absolutely. Well, you know, when you look at the data, it's easy to feel very pessimistic. Um, yes. Perhaps most alarming to me is that we are facing a future in which it may be very difficult to feed humanity. Right now, we grow enough food easily to feed all of the world if we just distributed it properly. Mm -hmm. But we are losing our topsoil at a terrifying rate. And a United Nations report concluded that by 2050, we could have half the arable farmland that we did in 1960 on planet Earth. Wow. Meanwhile, we're depleting our aquifers at a terrifying rate. And, you know, billions of people depend on underground water supplies, not just for drinking, but to grow their food. And if we continue to deplete them at this rate, the wells are going to be running dry in country after country around the world. Um, And I'm not just talking about the Middle East. I'm talking about places like Kansas. So this, these are alarming trends, and they are accelerated by climate destabilization, which is creating more desert, desertification in some places and, and the threat of floods in other places, and again, making it harder and harder to sustainably and reliably grow food for humanity. Meanwhile, our human population continues to grow. So it's, it's not hard to see that we're on a bit of a collision course with systemic environmental collapse and some pretty big food shortage problems down the road. So what do we do about that? Well, the number one thing we can do about that, quite frankly, is to eat less animal products Mm -hmm. because a tremendous amount of our climate change impact is actually fueled not by our cars or our trucks or ships or airplanes, but by our meat consumption. In fact, the United Nations concluded that that, uh, cows have more impact on our climate than cars do. And So if you care about the future of life on this planet and you care about the future of the climate on this planet, the number one simple action in your power to take is to eat less meat. And that also has other ramifications. You see, it takes 12 pounds of grain or soybeans to produce one pound of feedlot beef in the United States today. Mm -hmm. The other 11 uh, pounds are essentially wasted. They're turned into hoof and hide and bones and manure and energy that the cow uses to live. So we kind of have a protein factory in reverse when it comes to livestock production. And growing all the grain and soy that it takes to cycle it through livestock in our feedlots today is taking up a lot of land, some of which is formerly forest. So we've deforested 
tropical rainforests and our own forests around the world so that we can create grazing land for cattle and so that we can create cropland for cattle. Uh, about half the world's land area is in some way involved in livestock production. Wow. And all of that land is not being used to grow forests or to grow food for human beings. And we waste an enormous amount of grain and soy, and we, we put stress on the cropland in order to maximize yield so that we can waste most of it by feeding it to livestock. So when you choose to go plant-based and move away from a meat-centered diet, you also take a step towards helping to ensure that we have the food we need for future generations and to help us have a more sustainable farming system uh, that isn't focused on maximal yield so that we can make waste most of it. Um, these are some pretty powerful statistics, and I, I would add water is another big one. Huge. It takes about 2,000 gallons of water to produce one pound of feedlot beef in the United States today. I live in the state of California where we have perpetual droughts, it seems, year after year. Mm -hmm. And in our state, you know, we use more water for livestock than we do for all of the civilian and business and government uses in the state combined. Wow. Just for livestock production. So, mm -hmm. you know, all of our swimming pools and golf courses and toilets and showers for 38 million people. No, we use more water than all of that just for livestock. And we import most of our meat. Oh, so, my gosh. When you look at these facts, you realize that we can make a huge impact. We can take a big bite out of climate change. We can help to save water for future generations, and we can help to save our precious topsoil for future generations by adopting more sustainable practices and by eating less animal products. It's clear the passion that you have for this. And, you know, we reviewed the what's at stake part. What I really want to know is tell me about your book and the intent of the impact of your book? So my book has a few things that I think make it unique. One is that every single chapter is rooted in action. Two is that I focus on food personally, our own health, but I also look at food socially and systemically. And I bridge the personal and the political because ultimately what you eat is super intimate. What you eat literally becomes you. Mm -hmm. But it's also very political. It, it impacts farm workers and animals and policies and practices all over the globe. And those practices in turn impact you. When food is sprayed with neurotoxic pesticides, guess who winds up eating them? Yeah. When, when animals are tortured in factory farms, it doesn't just harm the animals. Those same animals are pumped for, full of hormones and antibiotics and their, their flesh is full of unhealthy fats because they never get to move. And guess who that impacts? It impacts the consumer, whoever ends up eating them. So at the end of the day, when you participate in a toxic food culture, you are harming yourself. And by the same token, when you stand for and participate in a healthy, sustainable, vibrant food culture, you are healing yourself. So I bridge those levels and I help readers, everybody, to realize how we can participate in creating the world that we want. The other thing that I think is kind of unique here, and I know you know this, Greg, is that there are 31 chapters, and people ask me why, and I say, well, because my grandpa founded a little ice cream company called 31 Flavors. I was going to ask Robin. you about that, yeah. Yes, and uh, you know, he, he had this brilliant idea that we could have more pleasure with not just chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry, but 31 flavors of ice cream, and one for each day of the month. And he inspired a lot of people to eat more ice cream, and brought a lot of smiles to a lot of kids' faces. But at the end of the day, we now know that ice cream and a lot of other of the, of the dominant foods in our food system today may taste good, but they also, in the long run, fuel diseases like cancer and heart disease and type 2 diabetes that, that do not feel good. So I am saying that 31 Steps to Health can bring you more pleasure and more satisfaction even than 31 flavors of ice cream. The way I look at it, food 1.0 is about survival. If you can get enough calories just to fill your belly, that's success. Mm -hmm. Food 2.0 is about commerce. That's what my grandpa pioneered. In food 2.0, we have amazing tastes and textures and cuisines from all over the world. Consumer is king in a sense, but unfortunately, food 2.0 is morally bankrupt. And that's why I'm saying we need to move to food 3.0, where the central organizing principle of our food system is health, health for our bodies and health for our planet. And there are plenty of profits to be made in Food 3.0. It's just that they come from healthy food. So 
that's what I'm standing for and calling for, and that's what this book is all about, is how you can step into food 3.0 and enjoy the health, the vitality, and the integrity that you deserve. Mm-hmm. So 31 steps. I'm sure there's a couple of them that might be your favorites. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I love them all, to be honest with you. And and part of what excites me is that there is no one-size-fits-all cookie cutter for what everyone needs to do. I have a right. big tent approach. Some some readers are already big-time foodies who are passionate, who shop at their local CSA and never touch any white flour anything and haven't eaten sugar in 17 years. And, and some of my readers are eating pretty much a standard American diet and looking at how they can eat a little bit less Doritos and scared about it, you mm-hmm. know? And, and what I want to say is that wherever you are on the path, I welcome you. I celebrate you. I respect you. And I'm here to support you in taking the next step. Uh, for some people, the next step is going to be to get rid of the worst offenders, to draw some bright lines and stop eating, you know, late night potato chips, which is my personal nemesis, or <laughs> or to move away from, you know, candy or whatever. For other people, it's they've already feel like they've got their their personal health, food, lifestyle pretty in order. Maybe they're trying to, trying to tweak a few things, but they want to change the world. They want family to support them. They want to know how to deal with tough family dynamics and social dynamics when, when, when loved ones don't get it or to deal with a mixed household where some people are eating very differently from others. And I want to help you navigate that so that you can be true to your values without coming off like the Grinch on Christmas, without feeling like you're a party pooper and you're, you're ruining, raining on people's parade. But at the same time, you don't have to compromise your basic integrity or your basic well-being. And frankly, I want to show how you can influence other people that you love. Because I'll bet you, everybody listening right now, I bet you that you have people in your life that don't eat exactly the way you'd like them to. And you're even concerned about how that's going to impact them long term. And I want to help you navigate those relationships and those dynamics effectively. So that's some of uh, some of it. Uh, as far as specific steps, I'll tell you uh, one of my favorites from each of the parts. So part one, detoxify. We look at you know how you can get rid of the bad stuff. And I suggest that you, uh, after we look at you know the whole terrain of food and what's good and what's bad, we look at how you can eliminate some of the worst offenders, whatever it is in your kitchen or in your life that might be doing you the most harm, the kind of lowest hanging fruit, so to speak, mm-hmm. things that you could clear them away without terribly suffering and they would make a real impact in your life. And, and, then, and then you can do that, you know, whatever it is. Make a commitment to not eat this item or or perhaps it's actually to, you know, use glass or metal food storage containers instead of plastic. Because That's I huge. Because I how plastic food sta- storage containers are carcinogenic. Yeah. And then it, in Nourish, we look at some of the great superfoods that are super helpful. And, you know, I'll tell you, it sounds trite, but the number one thing I think most people could do is to eat more vegetables. Yep. So we look at delicious ways to prepare them, how to trick yourself into liking them if you don't, how to enjoy them more, how to get your family eating them, and specific tips and tricks around that. And then in Gather, we look at you know the family and human and social d- dimensions of food. And in that context, one of my favorites is, frankly, share healthy food with people you love. Mm-hmm. If you're going to a party and you don't expect to have awesome food served there, mm-hmm. see if you can bring something. Offer to share it. Bring it with you. Be a source of health for the people in your life rather than being at the mercy of whatever might not be so healthy that they might be bringing. And then in part four, transform, we look at the global and social impact of food. And and there, I think one of the top things we can do, which I already talked about a little bit, is to eat less factory farmed animal products. The impact of that is just immense. It's huge. Yeah. Jumping back to gather, one of the things that I love to do because here at the Urban Farm, I have a third of an acre. And, uh, you know, I've over the past 29 years that I've lived here, I've really made it into a food force. So there's always something to eat. And one of the things that I love to do is gather things from here, make a salad or make some make an urban farm soup and take it to a party. And then it, it really becomes a center of conversation. Oh, my gosh, you did that. So do you have some thoughts about those kind of strategies? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that one of the epidemics of the modern world is loneliness. Mm. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, most people deep down in their heart feel a sense of not quite knowing where we belong or how we fit in and feeling like a little empty inside. So I'm interested in how we can bridge that gap with food. You know, there are studies showing us that loneliness kills more powerfully even than cigarettes. 
when you don't have a sense of belonging, a sense of community, a sense of real love in your life, that can be really toxic to your long-term health. So I'm interested in creating webs of connection and relationship. And a lot of times it's beautiful to cohere around things that matter. Obviously, healthy food can be a point of connection, but also conversation about things that matter. So showing a, a film that touches you to people you love and then having a little discussion afterwards, giving them a book with a post-it note in it to a specific page that said, this made me think of you, mm-hmm. or page you know, page 217 made me think of you. I, I guarantee you they're going to open that book and read page 217. <laughs> right. And if it's a good book, they'll keep going. Same thing with the DVD. Oh, at minute 1633, there's a powerful part that made me think of you. Guess what they're going to start with? Are they going to start at the beginning? Maybe, but there's a pretty good chance they're going to 1633. Right. So I think that this is these are good little tricks. Getting people engaged, sharing what you're learning, having conversations about things that matter, sharing delicious, healthy food. These are all tips and tricks for for um, moving and persuading people, but they also have the wonderful side effect of, of building bonds of connection and, and truth-telling with people you care about. Right. right. Well, the, the, the really the entire way that I run my platform, the Urban Farm You and the Urban Farm Here and on my online training, is I kind of hold up this notion of growing your own food and urban farming and say, oh my gosh, this is so easy and fun. You can do it too. And I put, <laughs> that, I put that excitement, that energy behind it, and it engages people dramatically. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So this isn't really a diet. I don't know that I would call this a diet. It's probably a, a new way of being. What, do you, what are your thoughts about that? It's definitely not a diet because diets sort of by definition are temporary abstinences. Mm -hmm. And I am interested in how we live day in and day out. In the long run, it isn't what you do for a couple weeks or a month that matters. It's what you do day in and day out. It's what you do when you're tired, when you're fatigued, when you're not thinking that shapes your destiny. Mm -hmm. And so I'm interested in creating the habits and the structures that set you up for success long term. You know, when when water flows, when it rains, it tends to go downhill and it also tends to coalesce in grooves. And over time, those grooves deepen and become gullies and eventually creeks and eventually rivers. I think that we all have patterns that unconsciously, whenever energy or life flows through us, we tend to route down those familiar patterns, neural pathways, etc. And creating healthy habits is the best use of willpower. Some people think that we are the author of most of the choices we make, and I say no, your past is the author of most of the choices that you make. Your habits are the author of most of the choices you think you're making because it's just like that water flowing down the familiar grooves. Studies show that we only get typically on average about 15 min- minutes of real willpower in any given day. And how you use those minutes Uh is what shapes everything else that happens and whether you create changes or just stay in the familiar. And so the highest use of those minutes, I think, is to focus on building the grooves and the pathways so that when it rains, when life happens, it goes in ways that are chosen and conscious rather than perhaps unconsciously chosen. A lot of us are still living out patterns that we picked up in our childhood survival strategies and pathways that may have made sense once, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they serve us today. So I'm all about helping us to make the choices conscious that enable us to get the results we actually want in our lives. And food is one place where it's so palpable and it's so tangible because you can actually start changing how you shop, where you shop, what you buy, what you prepare, how often you eat out, where you eat out, who you eat with, and as you make conscious choices around all these things, it gets easier and easier for you to do the right thing until it's unconscious. It's automatic. And that's when you know you've really succeeded. Yeah. So your book, 31 Day Food Revolution, Heal Your Body, Feel Great, and Transform Your World, where do we find it? It's available at bookstores around the world. Of course, you can get it on Amazon. Um, But if you're a real food revolutionary, I want to encourage you to think about supporting your local independent bookstore because that's how we really keep the book industry going and thriving and growing uh, for the new generations. I don't want to see our bookstores die out and everything just get bought online. And bookstores are a beautiful part of our culture. So if, if you believe that and agree with me, then this is a great opportunity to practice that. That said, you can absolutely get it at the online retailer of your choice. And you can go to 31 day 
foodrevolution.com as well, where you can get the book yourself and you can also get some wonderful bonuses. And even after you buy it, you can go to 31dayfoodrevolution.com. Let us know you made a purchase and you can get a bunch of wonderful bonuses for doing so. The key thing is, whatever method you choose, enjoy this book. I wrote it for you. I wrote it for the people you love. Mm -hmm. So read it and put it into action and you just might change your life and change your world. Awesome. And we you've graciously donated a few copies to us. So we'll be, Yes, I did. We'll be giving away those and uh, I'll talk at the end of the podcast on how you could qualify to win one of those. So what gives you hope in our world of food? Oh my goodness. Well, what gives me hope is you, Greg, and all the people like you who are talking about this, who are learning about it, who care enough to recognize that the status quo is unacceptable and are willing to be a part of the solution. You know, we have great leaders throughout our history who have inspired masses. But to me, the food revolution is incredibly grassroots. It it starts with every single one of us mm -hmm. and the everyday choices we make yes. and the way that we live. And we don't have to wait for some great leader or government policy or the food industry or doctors to get on board because the power is truly in our hands. We choose what we eat. We choose where we shop and what we buy. We choose who we eat with and how we eat and the consciousness we bring to it. And so let's make that a conscious choice. And the fact that we have that power gives me so much hope, uh, so much inspiration. And, you know, quite frankly, there are a lot of trade-offs you have to make in life. Places where, you know, you have to choose between the lesser of evils. We only have so much time and so much money. And, you know, when I look at my day, I have to decide, do I want to spend time with my wife? Do I want to spend time with my kids? Do I want to spend time working? Do I want to spend time exercising? Do I want to spend time eating and uh, preparing food or gardening? And all of these things can feel like they're competing for scarce attention and resources. But when it comes to food, we have a tr an opportunity to step into tremendous alignment because you can make food choices that are good for your health and that are good for your values and your planet all at the same time. I'd call that a win-win. I'd call that a twofer or maybe a threefer. Threefer, yeah. So that, that gives me a lot of hope because, wow, we can make such a difference here. Yes, we can. And that's, you know, really, that's what I base my every day on, that I can make a difference in the world. And, I, you know, if I can just touch one person every day, I'm doing great. Absolutely. So I'm really excited also in April of every year, you do a Food Revolution Summit Tell me, yes. a, tell me about this year's summit. It's the fifth annual one. Uh, it's going to be that. It's the eighth annual Food Revolution oh, Summit. Oh my gosh! Uh, we focus on how you can heal your body and your world with food. Every year in the Food Revolution Summit, I join forces with my dad and colleague John Robbins. I don't know if I ever told this full story earlier, but he walked away from the Baskin Robbins ice cream fortune to follow his own rocky road and mm -hmm. uh, become a best-selling author on food and health. And his books have sold millions of copies. And now we have the, the privilege of working together. So he interviews some of the top food experts on the planet. I host all the interviews. We broadcast these for free all over the world, anywhere you have internet access. And now you can sign up and join in. It's, it's an incredibly fun nine-day event with 24 of the world's top food experts sharing their wisdom with humanity. Mm -hmm. We've had more than a million people join in our past summits, and this year's going to be our biggest one yet. Wow. Congratulations. I, uh, I, I do love the work that you do there. Thank you. Absolutely. So it's been a while since we asked you this question. And so to wrap it up, can I ask for one piece of advice you might have for our listeners? One piece of advice. Well, here's, here's my top thing. Take a look at your vision, your dreams, for how you would like your world to be. Like, what kind of world do you want? Do you want a world where it's safe, where there's clean air and clean water, where, where children can play happily, where, where there's an end to violence, where there's an end to bullying? You know, what are your visions for what you want? Do you want a, do you want a world where people are healthy, where, you know, um, people live long, full, vibrant lives, and then look at the world right now and your life right now and realize, we all realize there's a gap, right, between the way we want things to be and, and the way they actually are right now, the way the world is and how we fit into it. And I would say that each of us is alive in part to bridge that gap, to make a contribution in some way to building the world that we want. 
uh, for humanity and also for ourselves. And so I invite you to look at yourself as a revolutionary who is here to help bridge that gap, who is here to help be the change. And we, we can fundamentally shift our identity from being victims or passive consumers to being active participants in building a brighter future. I don't get hope from seeing hope as a noun, as something that, a thing that happens out there. I see it as a verb, something we live, something we create, something we participate in. So my advice to you is to recognize that you get to live hope through the choices you make and the actions you take. And I would like to invite you right here and right now to declare yourself a food revolutionary and to join me in standing for healthy, ethical, and sustainable food for everybody who eats. Because together, we are turning the tide of history, and we're doing it together. Amen to that. And thank you so much for joining us on the show once again today, Ocean. My privilege. Thank you so much, Greg. You bet. And today we also have a special bonus for some lucky listeners. We have five copies of the 31-Day Food Revolution, Heal Your Body, Feel Great, and Transform Your World to give to our listeners. So you just have to email us at podcast at urbanfarm.org with a subject line, I want to transform my world, and tell us your name, and we will pick five random emails from the first 50 people that respond, and we'll send you this book out. So, Ocean, thank you for those to, to give to our listeners. Absolutely. Thanks for spreading the word. And, and listeners, join in. Take advantage of this opportunity. I wrote this book for you. Perfect. So how can our listeners find you, get a hold of you, interact with you? Well, of course, you can grab 31 Day Food Revolution anywhere good books are sold. You can go to 31dayfoodrevolution.com. You can also catch me at foodrevolution.org. And I'm in your heart. Find me there. Every time you eat, you can think of me and the food revolution and know that together we are bringing more consciousness and more integrity to our food systems and more health to our world. Perfect. You can also find show notes from today's podcast at urbanfarm.org forward slash 31 day revolution. We are your urban farming resource. You can find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and every place you can find podcasts. Also visit urbanfarm.org to find articles, webinars, courses, and more. Plus, if you want to hear more from Ocean and find his other podcasts, you can visit urbanfarm.org forward slash summit. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining us on the Urban Farm Podcast. Do you want to save money at the grocery store? Eat more organic whole foods, cultivate food security, and feel more connected to the earth? If so, then growing your own food is a no-brainer. You wouldn't believe how many people come to me claiming they can't grow their own food. They think they don't have enough space, that they're too busy, or that they simply don't have what it takes. Perhaps you've fallen for one of these gardening myths. If you think you can't grow your own food, or if you think the only food you have access to is what you buy in the grocery store, I have a life-changing webinar that you need to see. It's free and will help you unearth your inner gardener. I've helped thousands of people just like you grow their own food, and I'm speaking from my own experience when I say that with the right knowledge in place, there is no such thing as a brown thumb. With this free webinar, you can begin making your own garden dreams come true and start growing delicious, nutritious food for your family. Just text GARDEN to 44222 or go to IWantToGarden.com and you will receive our free webinar about the seven key factors you need to know to grow your own food. Remember, that's GARDEN to 44222 or IWantToGarden.com.